Put it away from the start time. Thank you. Testing, testing, testing. I'm going to put the slide up. Let me know if you have it here, everybody. <coughs> Everything good? Can you see the slide, Kathy? Okay, great. Whenever you're ready, Kathy. Okay, well, anyway, it's really, really, really close. We are not even, we're about not 20 seconds away. So I'm going to take this time to let you know that it is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you the market expert, founder, and lead trader over at thestockswish.com, Melissa Armo. And Melissa, will you please take over the microphone for me? Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much, Kathy and Online Trader Central, for having me. Welcome. As Kathy said, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today, I'm going to talk to you about something I'm sure is very exciting for all of you, which is number one, trading, and number two, how you can make a lot of money trading. And by a lot of money today, we're going to talk about twenty thousand a month, which averages about, you know, a thousand dollars a day. With some trading days, there's you know, a busier days than others. Some trading periods are busy periods rather than others. And the interesting thing is that we're going to talk today about the last two weeks of trading, which was in the non-busy period. We are coming up to the busy period of trading, which is fall earnings season. So there's going to be a lot of things to do. One of the things that's important if you want to be successful trading and you know anyone that's making any money at all trading, whatever the amount is one of the things that's important is that you have to have a focus and and i focus really on one strategy and that is what we're going to talk about today if we have time here at the end of the day also i can flip and bring up the charts at the end and we can look at some stock symbols if anyone has any questions but today you're going to learn a little bit about more what i do and if you have questions you can write them in the room and i'll say the question out loud and answer it as we go along if you'd like more information, you can email me at melissaatthestockswoosh.com and go follow me at any one of these places on social media. YouTube is probably the best place, though, really, to find me and to find videos like this. So can you make money in the market? The answer is yes. There are so many people, for example, even in New York, where I live, that make money in the stock market. So, and there are people all over the world. It's not beyond the realm of imagination. It's just that for some reason, uh, many people, when they start out, start to go down a road. Initially, most people don't know what they're doing when they start to trade, so they start losing. And then they go down this road of negativity. Well, you can't be negative if you want to make it. Now, you're going to take, it's going to take more than you being positive in order to do well in the market. But you do have to think positively about the very idea of trading itself. You have to not only know that it's possible intellectually, but you also have to believe in your heart that you can do it. And I really think that if you've got a good system and a good strategy and a good mentor, and if you believe that you can do it, you have all the odds in your favor, and that's what you want, okay? So it is about getting serious, and it's about doing something consistently that works, which is exactly what I do. There are billions of dollars in the market, Sometimes it seems like there's more money in the market than others when you watch on certain days. Uh, for example, last week, there was a couple days in market which seemed very, very slow, not a lot of volume. But soon you're going to see the market have a lot of volatility. There's a lot of things happening right now in, in the government, in the U.S. that are on the forefront. The tax plan Trump's trying to pass, his tax plan, and also the health care plan. All of these things are coming up in the next two weeks, and I think it will lead to some volatility in the market. It may not be till next week, but whenever it happens, or any one of these things either pass or don't by the deadline, then you're gonna see movement in the market, and you really will see the money take hold. And we're gonna to talk tonight about big money, which is institutional money in the market, and was one of the reasons why my strategy works. So anyways, you need a strategy that has big moves, okay? So I'm looking for stocks that have volume, that move, and when I say big moves, I mean it's incremental, depends on the price point of the stock, I typically am looking for things that will move a dollar or more in the day. Sometimes all you need is a 50 cent move though, depending on the share quantity that you have. 
but typically a dollar a day is what I'm looking for. And I'm not talking about very, very expensive stocks. This is in general, I'm usually looking for about a buck. Anyway, success or failure has a lot to do with what? It's not just you and how you view the market and your attitude, but it also is the quality of your system, your training system. And I might add, if you don't have a system at all, then you really shouldn't be trading. You really should not be trading. One of the things that I require is that people must do my Golden Gap course in order to be in the live trading room with me. And that's just, I think, a good decision for you as a person, as an individual, because you want the highest chance of success. And that means you need to know what to do. And if you don't know the system at all, how are you gonna know how to take the trades, okay? And there's so many people that are out there following different people in trading rooms and stuff, and they, they don't have a system and they don't have any knowledge of a system per se, okay? So how can you become successful day trading? Because what we're really talking about today is day trading itself, even though you can do options or swing trades with my method. Today we're gonna to talk about day trades. The number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. What does that mean? Translation, it does not mean that every day will be profitable. Inevitably in the market, nothing is 100% and you will have lost days. Even the best systems have days where sometimes things don't work. And you can knock your head against the wall a million times and try to figure out why, but that's just the nature of the market. What your goal is, what your number one goal is, is to have a high odds of success, to put the odds in your favor, by doing something, and I, and I call it conviction, but that you have conviction in and is going to work. And you follow the system. But like I said, not every trade works. You want more trades to work than don't work. And, and as a result of that, guess what? You'll be able to make money. And part of the focus, and we're gonna talk about this today at 1.2, is using stops so that your risk is fixed. You have a calculated risk. So that if, if out of 10 days, you lose one of the days, you don't blow up, okay? Because that's very important too. And it's important no matter how much money you risk. Uh, whether you're risking an advanced amount, whether you're a beginner, I mean, it doesn't matter. Even if you have a lot of money, you want to have a calculated risk. Just because you, some people say, well, oh, this is, sounds you know, great, Melissa, if you have a lot of money. You can do this system even if you have a small account. But obviously, your risk amount per trade will equate to the amount of buying power you have and size of cash in your account. And you'd have to build it up. But it's certainly, certainly something that you can strive to do as a goal. So my system is called the Golden Gap Rating System. It's a 26 point checklist. And what do I do? I trade gaps. For those of you that don't know what a gap is, we're gonna go over it, but very, very basic. A gap is when a stock closes at one price at four o'clock Eastern time, which is when the market closes, Monday through Friday, it's only open to four. Then it opens the next day at 9.30 at a different price. It could be any stock symbol in the world. You can name anything, any ETF, anything at all. Most stocks that are in the market gap from one day to the next. Some gap up, some gap down, but most gaps don't have any meaning. And what do I mean by that? Mean that they're predictable. So most gaps are not predictable, like today's gap. In fact, let's just pull this up here really quickly. Let me just see if I can do this really quick. Um, oh shoot, where did my chart go? Here, I'm trying to find my chart. I gotta sign back in. I don't wanna lose you guys. Let me see if I can do this quick. Oh, shoot, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can do this quickly to pull up the chart today because the market, well, actually, let's just do it at the end. Let's just do it at the end. The market today was not a predictable gap. The market today was not a predictable gap and I wanted to show that to you, but I can't bring it up fast without screwing up the PowerPoint. So we'll do it when, do, when we're done and I'll just shut the PowerPoint off and we'll talk about the charts. Anyways, the SPY and the QQQ, so it's the two uh, ETF ticker symbols I'm talking about right here. You can plop them in and look at them yourself. It was not a predictable gap today. In fact, I said that in the trading room, said we could hold here or we could go lower, we could rally or we could drop. So it was not a predictable gap. Therefore, what would be the play in the market today? No play. You have to be able to predict the directional bias that something will go. And I just talked about the market ETFs because it just came up in my mind right now. But like I said, we'll look at the charts when I'm done here. But you can look at them yourself. You want to be able to trade something that you have a high odds will go down therefore you would short it or up therefore you would go long the stock okay so if you have something that's going to rally in price you want to buy it and if you have something you can predict the price will drop you want to short it okay you're looking for institutional money grabbing hold of the stock in the gap 
and again, I'm going to show you some charts in a minute, and moving it. So when you have institutional money coming into a stock, it could sell it off. And then what are you looking to do? If you want to make money playing a sell off, you're going to short. So gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency in the stock. That's an action that's being forced by participants of the stock, meaning what? People that are long it or short it. People that are in it that have positions. They're forced to do something when the stock has a volatile move, when it drops big or when it rallies big, and that's what you're trying to find to play on as an individual. That's how you're going to make money. So gap trading is powerful because you're on the side of the institutional money when you play it, if you can pick the right ones, which is the whole purpose of my system. Now, this was a gap back from August, and I just want to show it because it literally fell off a cliff. Uh, this was car. Big move. So showing you here, and, and I just chose this because it just really, really uh, is a great example of something that has a massive move. High in this day up here was right under 33. It was like 32, 70-ish or whatever. And low down here was 30. So this is a massive bar for this stock. Again, it was car. So what did the stock do? It gapped down. For those of you that do not know what a gap is, I'm going to go over it. If you don't understand, you can ask me a question, write it in the room. Stock closed here, gap down. Gap down in the morning. So closed up here at 4 o'clock at 33 something and open in the morning where? 31 something. That's a gap down. So if you had shorted car on this day, this is back in August, you would have made money. If you'd gone long it, you wouldn't be in a good situation. Look at the bar. You would have been down. Okay. So this is a very big move, a massive move. Institutions are dumping the stock on the day. They dumped it. They sold it off. And there were some shorts in there. So you want to be with the side of this power. And again, how do you predict this? So that's what I do. My checklist predicts when I get up in the morning and I see car hovering because it's moving. It's moving in the price in the pre-market and the moving around this area. It's probably moving all around here. And that's what I do that I read it. And I predict, Melissa, is this going to rally or is it going to drop? And in this case, it dropped. So what I'm looking to do is to figure out what somebody's going to do before it happens. Otherwise, after it happens, it's too late to play it. And this is what's so phenomenal about trading is that it is so easy to make money if you are able to know where something's going to go. And like if you could fast forward in time and say, da, 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 you know, the market's going to be at this price or Amazon's going to be at this price by such and such a date. If you could move forward in time and look into a crystal ball and see it, well, you know, that's the keys to the kingdom for you being rich. Since we can't look into a crystal ball to do that, we have to read the price action that we get. And I'm looking at it all. I'm looking at everything I got and particularly the live day two to make my predictions in the time that I'm looking to watch the stock to get the move, which for day traders means you gotta be in and out before four, but I'm predicting where it's gonna go before it does it on that day. Now, one of the things that I also wanted to bring up is the time period that you can make money in gaps. And one of the things in the title was in a half an hour. Most of the moves that these stocks make that we're looking at on the intraday charts make moves in the morning, between 9.30 and 10 or 10, 10.30, in the first half an hour of the day usually. So this was HTZ, this just was a recent gap. It closed up here the night before in the one minute chart and gapped down, open, rallied, broke. Time of the day here, 9.30, do you see where the drop came into? 9.40, so within 10 minutes the stock fell. So if you'd shorted the stock up here before the drop, you had a nice move, a very smooth move. Okay, beautiful, beautiful move in this. Does everybody see that? So again, time of the day is critical to get the momentum in gaps. Now again, this is not in every single solitary thing that the trades. You're looking for gaps, and you're looking for gaps that have a specific direction of bias for that day. And today we're looking at shorts, and really, the reason that I prefer to watch stocks that gap down and then to short is because stocks that drop and sell off can have big, fast, quick moves. And actually, HTZ is one of these. You can really see here how it just collapsed. Actually, Facebook did that today. But I didn't really notice that gap until very late. But Facebook was a good example today of something that fell off a cliff. So in your mind, when you're making your trading choices, 
Do I go long this stock? Do I go short this stock? You want to align your choices with where the institutional money is going to take it because that's how you're going to make money. You will not be profitable if you are against institutional money in a chart. And if you happen to be, it's just by dumb luck and you want to get in and get out really, really quickly. In order to be consistent, you've got to be with this big money. And this big money is what moves the market, is what moves stocks. And, you know, banks, hedge funds, that's what I'm talking about when I say institutional money. They want to make money. They have money and they want to do something with it. So they want to invest in stocks in the market so that they can make money too. And they're making their money work for them. That's the whole philosophy. You've got to make your money work for you. And how can you better do that? Well, you could put your, your money in a bank, in a CD, or you can invest it long term, or you could learn to day trade. And the, the reason day trading is nice is just because, like I said, it happens so quick, like this move in here, you could have taken the trade and been out in a few minutes. So you want to make good choices. And, you know, quite frankly, not everybody does when they trade. But I want you to keep this in mind. You got to find quality trades, have a system at least feel good enough that it works that you trust the person that taught you it if you learn in a class or practice it yourself with small size or over a period of time with a with a demo even you want to make sure that you are following a structure and and good choices is part of that like good choices means you're going to be thoughtful enough to say you know what i need a structure i don't have a structure you know think about what i'm saying this makes a lot of sense Anyways, one of the things that I'm looking at is the how, when, and when, when I go in to watch a stock, how, what am I looking at? I'm looking at the gaps, I'm finding the gap first, then I'm reading the gap for my system. It's a 26 point system, but I'm looking for 20 as a cutoff. So in other words, somebody doesn't have to get every point in the world. It's got to get 20, that's the minimum. And I'm looking to do it in the direction of the gap, which means gap ups, rating to go long, gap downs, rating to short. Again, today we're looking at shorts because it's mostly what I watch in the morning. If there isn't a good short, then it will flip and I will look for bullish gaps, okay? And when am I looking to do them? In the morning early when the stocks set up in that first part of the day before they have their big move. And, and again, the niche to what I do is that I know what I'm watching before the open so I can get it. Because otherwise, just going back here really quickly to the Hertz, um, you would, if you were watching this and you didn't happen to see this, to know to watch this before 9.32, you did not get this drop off. The stock set up here, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, okay, you would have never caught that on a scanner within two minutes, which is how a lot of people look. And also the scanner wouldn't have even picked it up until after this collapsed. So the collapse then here would have happened, then it would have come up in a lot of scanners, but this is basically where if you were in the room with me and you were doing the trade calls, you would have been in and out in this period. Not that it didn't continue, but this is the money move. Okay, this is what you want in here, all right? Any questions so far by anyone? All right, let's look at a trade. So this one here was SNCR, nice gap down. Closed here, gap down, boom, dropped. Now this really fell off a planet. If you look up here where the stock was the previous night, it was around 16 something, okay? Then you look at it in the morning, it's around 11 something. You say, wow, whew, that's taken a nosedive. And it really has, okay? So you would see this in the morning, then you would rate the gap and determine if it's a long or a short. Then you would watch it on the live day, you wait for it to set up, and if it sets up, you short it, and you get in and get out between 9.30 and 10, 10.15ish. But you're usually watching in the very early morning period, okay? And this moved. So here is the move on this. Could have done it here, you could have done it here, dropped, fell a little bit more, but this was the, the majority of the move here, again, happened between where? 9.30 and 9.45. Now this may not look like much, okay? But it actually, from the high up in here, you know, 1170-ish, whatever, and to the low down in here, the stock moved to $1.50. You don't need to capture every penny of this move to make money. Number one, anything you, any place you got it in here, you shorted it, as long as you shorted it even in the first six minutes. 
you you made money if, as long as you got out down in here when it bottomed out. But the point is though that you don't need even that entire move from the high to the low to make some decent money on this. It's about grabbing it, knowing to do it, to see it, to get it, and then taking the entry with size, especially if you wanna make, like I said, $20,000 a month or more. You're taking the trade with authority, with size, and you put the stop and it goes. Oh, here was actually the daily chart for you to look at. So this closed the night before up here. This was the, the previous chart was the one minute. This is a daily. So you can see where the bar went. I mean, that really just absolutely collapsed. And then following through, several days later it did. There you go. Anyways, price of the entry, if you shorted this, I'll go back to the one minute in a minute, 11.15. 3,000 shares of quantity is a, is a decent size, okay? Exit 1075, nowhere near the low. But guess what? You could have made $1,200. So this is just a trade that you're in and out in a couple of minutes, several minutes, and you could have made over a thousand bucks. And that's not even holding it all the way down, okay? It's just grabbing it and getting out. That's it. This isn't even holding it all the way down. This went another 50 cents plus. So the idea is to just get in and get out and know that you know how to do the entry, know where there's going to be a sell-off. It's like a, it's like a slidey board when these things sell off. Do, do, you, do you see it here? It's like a, it's like you're in the pool and you're going down the water slide in the pool and it goes whoo and it just goes right down. It goes doo like that. In fact, that's how this one was here too. You go up the slidey board doo and you fall down the slide. You want to capture that selling slidey board. And that's what, that's what you know, I'm watching every single morning. But again, have to have it picked and prepped and ready to go and know to watch SCNR. Oh, actually, it's SNCR. I, I misspelled this here now. <laughs> I just noticed that. I wrote it at the top. It's SNCR. Sorry, people. Anyways, you have to know to watch SNCR. You have to know to watch... BBBY, if that's the one, you have to know to watch the specific stock symbol to get the slidey board because it could come in very, very quickly. All right. Any questions so far with anybody? Oh, here I spelled it right there. Rushing. Sorry about that. It's SNCR. I misspelled it on this one slide. If you want to look it up, there. Uh, date of the gap was, was it the 14th? No, the 19th, 19th in there, last Tuesday. So every morning I'm watching in the morning, but sometimes there's gaps at night. Like right now there's things that are gapping. I don't think there was any significant names out tonight, but sometimes you can find the gaps at night and be all prepared and ready to trade in the morning, okay? Timing is very, very important because if you don't get that sliding board, guess what? You're either waiting for the stock to push back, you don't get most of the move, you have to take a bigger stop. The later in the trading day, you also have to worry about the market directional bias. Okay, I don't really pay much attention to that in the morning. I mean, I will if I'm looking to see uh, if, if it can go a little bit farther, but for the most part, what I do is completely on its own, irregardless of the market direction. And the market's been very, very bullish overall. So just going back, what, looking at the last two weeks, and I want to go through this here and show, show everyone, if you're in the live trading room and took an advanced risk, and by that I mean a $1,000 minimum, some trades a little bit more, some trades a little bit less risk, because this is not an exact science when you're sizing yourself to take you know, 2,000, 3,000 shares, every stop size is different. But the point is, though, that this was not a busy time. It was not a busy trading time. It just wasn't. And so in a non-earning season period, if you can make over six grand in one week, and last week was, was less, but still, if you had done all of these trades, guess what? You'd still be on pace for the month. Last week and the previous week, you'd still be on pace for the month to make 20 grand a month. And I suspect that this week is going to have some good trades. 
I just, I just don't know what we're going to get exactly in the gaps. But I think there's going to be some things and maybe even some of the healthcare stocks end up gapping this week because of what's going on. But if you could earn this kind of money, even in a slow period, it's great money for the period of time of the day that you're trading. You've got to know what to do, though. I mean, you, get, you know, all these ticker symbols just look back in here. Monday the 11th is a spy. ICPT was the 12th. 13th, no trades. Some days you won't have anything that's good. Hertz was on the 14th. 15th was Oracle. That was a good one, too. Last week's spy was a Monday. SNCR, Tuesday. PBBY didn't work. Two losses on the 20th. And still pulled out a week. BBBY 1620. Matt did it, killed it. KMX was positive, and Fennel was a bust. And we are going to go over the Fennel trade, which didn't work too. But this, this, you know, this was not even an amazing week, and still, still profitable. Any questions from anyone so far about anything? The point is you got to watch who's moving the stock and who's in control and institutional money controls stocks even for the day for the long term it, that's the way that you can really make money trading but to get in and get out very quickly as a day trader and capture these moves when they happen is is fun and it's exciting and not every trade is going to work but many will if you follow the system it's 20 points or more and also, it has to set up on the live day. The idea is that you're going to have more winners and losers, like you saw in the last two weeks. There weren't no losers. And the one day was two losers. You, you just have to win more times than you lose. And you have to be controlled with what you're doing. Most of the days, I'm trying to watch just one ticker symbol. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious. If, if I have some of the days where there's more than one ticker symbol, probably was a tough day for me. But the best, best days is one trade, one ticker symbol. And that is, you know, most of the 365, you know, 200 trading plus days a year, uh, that is the case. It's control. It's the focus. It's knowing what somebody's going to do before it actually happens. Knowing where it's going to go. Knowing if it's going to rally. Knowing if it's going to drop. And, and that is how you end up moving forward and becoming profitable when you can duplicate a system that works, that has a high win ratio. You get over the days sometimes when you lose. You don't let it bother you either. I mean, this last week, shook it off, got up, did even the same stock symbol on Thursday, BBBY. So, you know, you got to learn to shake off even the times when things don't work right. Anyways, it's all about the checklist. It's 100% what I'm focused on, what I'm doing in the morning, what I'm looking at the stocks. That's what gives me conviction. So what does my system do? It measures gas by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. A big move in the day. Definitely, definitely looking for that too. Early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential. Because you want to be able to have, like I said, at least minimum of a dollar target doesn't mean you're going to stay in the trade the whole time but you want to you want that at least and sometimes more like i'm not talking about the dream target but you want to know that you can think you can make at least a buck if it goes but sometimes things go even more and this is not based on the price point of the stock i'm just saying in general like facebook for example today fell very hard and had a massive move and that's a high price point stock over 160. so it's relative to the cost of the stock as well but it is really about trade selection. You got to pick a good one. And it's, it's you know, you got to pick a good one pretty much every day. And if you don't see a good one, you don't do anything that day. And there are some days where it seems like nobody with any big money is really in the market. That's the case some days. Th then there are other days where it seems like you could have done 10 things at once. You know, that's what it is. And I'm not saying you can't, but I usually try to focus on one, but sometimes you get multiple things setting up at the same time. You're watching to see what the institutions are doing. Where are they taking the stock? And this is the only way for you to be successful as an individual trader because you're never going to move a stock. If you take 10,000 shares of something, you're not going to move a stock unless it's some penny crap stock or something with really, really, really low volume. Any questions so far by anybody? Quiet group here tonight. I feel like I'm talking a little fast. Any questions? How's everyone doing? Does everybody understand what a gap is? 
If you don't ask me, you will learn in the class how to rate the gaps, what a gap is, and also how to take the entries. It's important too. Anyways, the rating system is really the crux, the meat and potatoes of my system. It's what tells me what direction the stock's gonna go, where's the money flowing, where's it gonna take it, and that's how you're gonna make the profit. So what do you need to make trading work for you? Number one, you need a strategy. We're just gonna break it down. Here was a daily chart of Hertz. I had shown you the one minute. This is the daily. So this is first we're gonna get the points. This was the gap back in here. I showed you the one minute chart, but this is the daily picture of it. Right in there, see that guy? Closed here, gap down, fell hard. So on this day here was the day that you would have shorted it and gone long. That's the strategy. The strategy is the gap. So that's number one. Number two, you need a system to follow with rules for the picks. You can't be all over the place. And again, I prefer to watch shorts first. If there's no good shorts, then flip to the longs. But you really, really have to be focused. No deviation. Follow the rules. If, if I'm saying that it's 20 points or more, don't deviate. Don't do a gap that rates poorly. Don't, don't do something if there isn't anything to do at all. Number three, you need a method and a structure to enter and exit the picks. This, again, is what you learn in the class, but for me, it's got to set up by 10 o'clock. It's got to set up by that morning period. It's got to set up and go within that half an hour, or I probably don't like it. It's probably not going to work right. It won't have the institutional push in it or rally. It's not getting bought, really, on the day if it hasn't gotten going until later. And, and that's all kind of what I'm looking at when I'm watching the stock and when I'm watching when it's, when it's trading. If you didn't have a method to do this, you might have gone long, over the high here, over the first bar, and, and, and gone long here, you would have lost. And this was a big red bar too. Some people think that gaps fill themselves. That's not true. But anyway, some people trade like that. And anyways, people went long here. So it had this move over the high. So you got to know what you're doing with this. Because if this sets up in here, how are you doing it? Are you doing HTZ as a short or a long? Well, you better know. You better know even before this bar even goes. So that's why, why you have to really follow the system and know it. And, and there has to be a structure. And again, I use stops, which is a hard stop that you put in at, the, at, at a number. And if it will go over the number, then you would be out and you would be out with a loss. But it protects you for, from your risk. Number four, you also should have monetary goals per day, per week when you trade. Goals which should be based on a risk unit. How much are you risking? Your goal is to make three hours if it gets to a bigger target on the day, but you may have to hold it past a half an hour. You're trying though, minimum to make one risk unit every day. And then some days you will just have big days. Some days you will take something and it will just run. It's the reliability in what you're, with what you're doing. It's sticking to the system. That's how you can predict where somebody's going to go, and you just get better at it over time. I mean, I've been trading since 2008. I've had the business since 2013. You know, the longer that I'm even teaching people and looking at charts and reading charts and using my own system, which is, you know, almost nine years now, it, it's really, really interesting because I've gotten better over time predicting things myself. So. Normal people, when you're in a, a set career, or you're doing something that's your job or your career, do get better at it over time. For some reason, there's this thought process with people that trade that over time, they're just going to lose. But if you're getting better at a system, and if you're getting better at chart reading, and if you have a good strategy, and you're using that same thing consistently over time, and it works well, you will get better. I mean, you will get better at it. It's... It's the idea of thinking, not only positive that something's going to happen, but the thinking big in your mind. This doesn't mean that you run out tomorrow necessarily and risk $1,000 to trade, but you can have goals for yourself, for the future, between now and the end of the year. If you want to learn my method to do the class, you learn it, and you say you're going to risk this much, and then by January 1, you're going to step it up to risk this much, you go back and see how you're doing. You have to have a plan of action. Otherwise, how are you going to make it happen? And again, the, the idea of making 20 grand a month is not just 
the the risk amount. It's understanding the system. It's seeing seeing it, seeing it at work, seeing it at play, having the conviction yourself because you're the one that's going to take the trades. You're the one that's pressing the button. The button, okay. And and I have people in the room. I know some of them jump into trades before they set up. Some of them don't use stops. You know, but they know better. It's up to them. I think it's important to follow rules, and good money management is one of those rules, and it means using stops. Now, I'm gonna go over this one here because this was a loss, this was fennel, and Friday, this did not work. And if people in the room did not have a stop in this, guess what? It flew over the stop. I think I, think I had 860, yeah, I think it was 860 was a stop in this. Anyways, it just went crazy over the stop. So good money management means you have a stop in, and if the stock gets hits, you're gonna be down. But at least you're not down something crazy. Not everything works. Actually, this really was a failure because look what it did the today. This actually rallied up today. So good money management is you put in a stop and you can't be afraid to take a stop. And a lot of traders don't use stops. I mean, I was surprised with that the more that I talked to people. I think it's important to use stops no matter what your size is. 3,000 shares, 4,000 shares, 5,000 shares. I think, you know, you don't want somebody to go against you so much. But you really got to be deliberate in your choices when you're choosing what stock symbol to trade, whether it's HTZ, SNCR, any of the ones that you're doing, you really want to decide, this is the one, I'm doing it, boom, okay? So if you're interested in learning my method, you can come to me and do my course. The class is this weekend, September 30th and October 1st. Now, if you'd like to join the trading room for a trial this week, which would be, you know, starting tomorrow morning through Friday, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you would like a free trading room trial. You can be in the room this week. Again, I think if you're if you're coming in for the trial to just observe, watch, you know, watch me say this one or that one before the trading, you know, before the day opens and see if it works. Does anybody have any questions so far about anything? I definitely think my system has an edge. It's not just because I'm really good at doing it and I've done it now for a number of years, but I also think because, you know, it's just I have a unique way of looking at things. I just have a very unique way of reading a chart. I mean, I've continued to predict the market and make new highs. It's continued to do it. I didn't really look to see how we closed today, but gaps are one of those things that so many people get wrong. <laughs> I mean, in fact, I don't know anybody else besides me that gets it right as much as I do. Gaps are something that really can move so fast and have the momentum and have the volatility, but I mean, there's just so many people out there that are doing them wrong. And then what happens is people don't understand gaps, but you do, you, you can make money doing them, number one. And number two, you've got to learn how to understand them. And, and it's following the institutional money is a big, big piece of it. It's a big, big piece of what I do. Having a plan of action is important too if you want to make money. And like I said, you will learn my method in my course. So the course teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power, money, and charts. The course teaches you how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. Obviously, that's the only way you're going to make money. The course teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis in gaps. And the course teaches how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. So you really, you got to get to the point where you're starting somewhere. Again, if you're not able to risk $1,000 per trade right now to make an advanced risk unit or $20,000 a month, then start with $100, start with $200, start with what you can afford. You've got to start somewhere. If, if you want to get to the point where you're making $1,000 a day, then you got to at least prove you can make $500 a day first. The strategy is the same. The only difference is size in the trades. And also proving to yourself that you can follow a structure. Some people are better at that than others, to be honest with you. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I find some people in the room are more successful than others. Some people are more focused on what I say in the morning. Discipline, use stops. Don't look for piggy targets. But you've got to really focus on quality. Like I said, if there isn't any good trades that day, you don't do anything. And that's just what it is. 
So what would you be looking to do if you wanted to put a plan of action in place? Come do my class, trade only gaps. That's what you want to do to have a high success rate. You get the best entry you can, you write the targets down in the room in the morning, you play it out looking for the period in the first half an hour of the day. And then you create a money management plan where you're gonna risk a certain amount, build up your account, get to the point where you can make $20,000 a month, prove to yourself you could do it, and also you know, results really are help your mindset. So once you start to see the results, meaning the profits, it will help your mindset if you haven't had a good mindset you know, to date about trading. But my class will teach you the rating points. It's teach you how to enter and exit the stock. It'll teach you how to read institutional positioning in charts and how to, how to trade gaps, which is very, very important. It's the rating system that does it. And you want to get to the point that if you're setting yourself up between now and the end of the year to decide what to trade, and if you want to trade at all, you've still got plenty of time left in the end of the year to, to make money. Last week of September, all of October, November, December. So three months plus, if you really want to do this, the nice thing about trading is, like I said, you're not working that long. You're not in front of the screen. You're not at your desk for that many hours a day. If you wanted to go get a part-time job to make more money between now and the end of the year, it's probably going to be 20, 30 hours a week. Trading does not take that much time, but you have to know what to do. And you've still got plenty of time left in the year to make it count. To, to not only learn my system, but actually prove to yourself that you can do it. And then you can go into the beginning of 2018, really saying, I'm going to focus on this this calendar year for an entire year. I mean, three months is a good enough period of time for people to do the class this coming weekend, learn the system, get in the trading room, do it, see it, see it working for themselves. Because it really, a lot of it has to do with you doing it as well. You know, I can talk and talk and talk and call the trades in the room that you can watch them go by, but you've got to do it. Okay. Any questions at all? My, this is a really quiet group. <laughs> this is so quiet. <laughs> Anyways, think about the things I said tonight, people. It really is about how badly do you want it. If you want to empower yourself, you can learn how to trade. It is not impossible. It's something that takes focus and detail, and you've got to have a good system. My system teaches you all the 26 points, everything you need to learn how to read gaps in the directional bias. And what you want to do is follow the institutional money. That's what I teach in the class. So the class is online. It's a two-day course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and stocks that are professional bearish gaps. As I said, the class is this coming weekend. September 30th and October 1st from 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $49.99. If you're interested, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you want to sign up. I was running a special just for the people on my marketing list. I decided to extend it out this week. I did not, unfortunately, have time to get back to everyone the last few days. I am a very busy person, uh, but I try to make the time for my students in the trading room in the morning. The trading room opens at 8.30. It's usually open between 8.30 and 10.30, 8.30 and 11. And that's the time when I'm there with the people and answering questions of the, the people that have done the class. But if you want to sign up, this is a really nice offer. It's a fall earnings season special. You would get the trading room free for one year, one whole year. That's all the time in the room to trade with me for free for a year in the room and you can't beat this. I mean, this is just a great deal. So you would take the class this weekend and be in the room to get all my calls. If you're interested in this, you got till Friday to sign up. Again, you can email me if you want to trial this week. It's melissa at thestockswish.com. I also do another class, it's called the Trends Course. I don't do this class that often, but if you want to learn how to do this, it's a two-day course usually. I'm putting it all on one day on Monday. It's just going to be a long day, November 1st, where I'm going to talk about how to read long-term trends and charts. If you want to do both, you'd save $500. You do September GAT class and the November Trends class, but it's all going to be in one day. Price for this is $54.99, okay? So fall is going to be a good time to trade. I hope, I hope some of you learned something. Uh, I, I know that, that trading can be challenging at times, but... You know, one of the reasons that I'm so successful is I have a huge amount of focus. I do have a good attitude about trading, but I, you know, there are days when things don't work, like last week, the BBBY. It, you still got to get up the next day and just do what you do normally and not let it bother you and shake it off. 
And you can see you can even pull out a nice positive week on a slow period. Does anyone have any questions? Everyone has been super duper quiet. I hope that means everybody understood everything I said. If you want a trial, yeah, you can email me here. You can, yes, I don't know what we're gonna get this week, but there's some, there's some names out this week. There's some things we're gonna move this week. And like I said, some of the gaps this week might be for a whole variety of reasons. News related, sector related, some could be earnings, you just never know. I mean, I never know until I get up in the morning unless I'm watching this stuff at night. And I try to give myself a 24 hour period where I have a break to look at charts. I mean, like I'm talking tonight, but it's not like I'm engaged in something thinking about the next day. I try to give my eyes a break and my mind a break from looking at charts. I think that keeps you fresh, it keeps you alert. Um, and I've really, I think that's one of the things I've done a good job with even the last year. Part of it is I've been busy with other projects and things, um, you know, like the things I've been doing with television, but I do think that it has helped keep me fresh for the next morning. You, you, need, you need time off in between the morning of the trade on Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday and so on and so forth. It's one of the reasons why I don't think trading all day is good either. I think it's, it's tiring for you to be at risk in trades up until four o'clock. All right, everyone. Well, if you think of anything, you can call me. You can email me. I appreciate everyone for coming today. And definitely, definitely, if you'd like a trial, you can email me too. It is a gorgeous, lovely evening here in New York City. So I will let everyone go and enjoy your fall evening. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you for having me, Kathy. You're welcome.